Hey, welcome to Hostify. My name's Alex, and today we're going to look at how to set up a nanostation M2 or M5 as an outdoor Wi Fi access point. We've got a guide on our support center, link is in the top right hand corner and down below, showing you all the steps you need to turn a Loco M2, nanostation M2, or any other M2, M5 devices that Ubiquiti makes into a standard 82.11 Wi Fi access point. Guide is pretty extensive, it covers all the steps you need to do, including the router mode on both those devices because uh, you can put this in bridge or router mode um, but we're going to jump in and look at a Loco M2 just now and get everything out of the box and see what comes with it. This is the Nanostation Loco M2, a 2 GHz device in the Air Max M family. So it is quite an old device but the Ubiquiti are still making them. Uh, it runs AeroS 6 uh, which was released, the last version of that was released a few weeks ago. So they are still supporting it and it is still sort of a current product even if it is quite old now. So in the box you get a PoE injector, you get the Loco M2 itself, and I'm in the UK but I got given an EU plug, um, and they didn't send me a UK plug which was, which was great. <laughs> on the back there's the LEDs, LEDs for the status of the device, and then you can undo the cover and there's one port in the bottom which you plug the PoE injector into. So on the brand new PoEs there's a red icon to show which one's power, plug that into the device and it will power up. And then from the LAN port, plug that into your network, um, or if you're using some sort of router, which we will cover the router mode at the end, you can use it as a router as well. Okay, now we've got everything plugged in, we're going to look at how to set up everything in the GUI on the NAS station. So I've got the NAS station set up here, it's just asking me for a username and password, so this is going to be a password or username that you want. I'm going to choose UBNT and UBNT. Country for me is United Kingdom. I'm going to say I've read the terms and press login. So now we're logged into the nanostation. First thing you want to do is change the way the nanostation is connected to the internet. My subnet is 10.0.108.1 and this is set to static IP address at the moment, so I'm going to put this on DHCP. I'm going to turn off IPv6 so I don't have that enabled on my network. I'm going to leave this in bridge mode. For this setup I'm going to choose to have this outside covering a large sort of grass area. Uh, I'm going to leave this in bridge mode and then the, the power for the nanostation is coming from a unified switch. It's just 24 volts, so you can use a, one of the older unified switches for that. So for wireless, what we're going to do is set this to access point. I'm going to have WDS uh, turned on. My SSID is going to be Hostify, Hostify Wi-Fi. Channel width for 2 gigahertz. This should be left on 20 megahertz only. If you're going to connect any Wi-Fi devices to it, that is. If you're using this sort of point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint, you can use any of the above. Uh, or any of the below, 10 megahertz would be the most appropriate for sort of short, low bandwidth applications. Security is going to be WPA2, and we're going to have just password for this, or well, we have some, some random random numbers. For the output power, uh, we're going to have this on 12, the maximum. If you do want more, you can enable that. This maximum TX rate, leave this on the maximum, because that's the, the maximum that the device will connect at, and then leave it on auto. We'll go to advanced. And then installer EIRP control, we can change that and then go back to wireless and we can actually increase the power level to 23 if we want to. I'm going to leave this on 10, uh, 12 dBs, that's fine. So that's all set up. The next thing we want to do is go to the Air Max button and then turn Air Max off and then press change. And we'll apply that and then see on our phone if we're going to get a connection to it. So just on my phone now, I'm going to look in the Wi-Fi section. I found the Hostify Wi-Fi SSID I made. Password, you can get that from the GUI of the nanostation if you're not entirely sure what it is. That's connected. So now I've got my phone connected to the nanostation M2. You can see there's an extra box here for WLAN 0. So that's the wireless interface of the, of the nanostation. This LAN 0 box would move over to the left. So that shows you that these two interfaces are doing something. And it tells you the receive and TX rates. So you get my stations. So there's two devices connected. Uh, there's two devices connected to the nanostation already. It tells you latency to that device, the modulation levels, the CCQ, which is a connection quality indicator for Air Max devices. And you can see I've got both uh, these devices connected. It tells you the uh, receive signal. The TX signal section only fills in when there's another Air Max device connected because they can sort of communicate between them. Uh, so that, that's a look at how you see which devices are connected to that AP. The router mode on the nanostation. 
this would be useful at a location where there isn't a dedicated router, there is an internet connection, you can actually use the nanostation to terminate a PPPoE session, a static IP address, or obtain DHCP from the ISP. To do that, go to network, and then you've got the network mode, you can put it in router, and then you can either disable the WLAN 0 if you want to, or the LAN 0, but we're going to leave that as it is. I'm going to put this in advanced mode because there are some extra options that you need. And then what, what it's done is it's actually put the, the nanostation in the mode we actually want for this particular application. Uh, other types of applications such as WISPs, the, the WAN interface and the LAN interface will be, will be completely reversed. Um, but for this, the WAN interface is LAN 0. So if you imagine you've got the PoE injector, the LAN port of the PoE injector is going to plug into our modem. And then from there we can choose either DHCP, static IP address or PPPoE. If this was our actual router, block management access could be enabled or disabled. We're going to leave it on enabled for now, so the access is allowed. We can put some firewall rules in place to restrict access on the on the WAN, but if we're on the LAN side and the we want to get access to change the password, that option would be removed otherwise. So we can choose triple PoE, so PPPoE, and we put our username and password in there or in service name if it's required, and then we can also enable NAT from there. We're going to put it on DHCP for now. Enable NAT, enable all of these boxes because they are default, they're unticked. Um, don't worry about the DHCP fallback IP address. We're going to turn on DNS proxy, enable the DHCP server, enable this to the maximum runtime, which is 172800 seconds. I think that's seven days, not too sure. Um, leave that on the default IP range it is, and make sure that DHCP range is enabled. And we can come down and add VLANs if we want to. Uh, we can enable the firewall, so we could say, uh, drop, drop LAN zero um, ICMP for example, and then we could say that's going to allow or disable all pings on that side, and we can change that from there. Go to wireless, and the config for this section is exactly the same as it was in the bridge section of this video. You just got this acting as the router. If you are using the NAS station in in a scenario where there's already existing router do not enable the router mode it's just going to create more problems it's going to introduce something called double nat it's going to make things like voip calls things like xbox uh, other live streaming or live services very difficult to use such as vpns um, vpns are going to have a problem with this as well so if you've got this in a setup where there's only there isn't a router at all use the router mode if there is one put it in bridge and it'll reduce the problems that you might have so that's a look at how to set up a Nanostation M2 or a Nanostation M5 as a Wi-Fi access point for standard Wi-Fi clients. You can find the written guides of this video in the top right hand corner or in the link down in the description, as well as our other support guides at support.hostify.com. If you want to learn more about Hostify, have a look at hostify.com. You can contact the team at support at hostify.com and you can follow us on Twitter at hostify underscore net. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Alex and we'll see you again next time.